Well, thank you very much. I will try my best not to disappoint you today. Um, I uh, am an EIU alum myself. I actually uh, graduated here as an English major in 1986. I will admit that. Um, I uh, actually went into uh, educational administration ultimately after uh, five years of teaching and so I guess uh, I was listening in to Dr. Dively before and uh, that was some interesting stuff taking me back to school law classes but um, <coughs> I may not uh, be quite as uh, factual on some of the stuff uh, that I'm going to talk about but it's something that I care about deeply and really the reason that I'm here, the reason that I came back to EIU um, after being a, an independent consultant was because this position gave me the opportunity to work with teachers all the time and to help teachers to do something very challenging which is to build character in their students. Um, you know, I like to say that uh, how you handle students will be fundamentally different based on whether you're acting to manage their behaviors or build their character. And so I'm going to talk about that today and hopefully give you some concrete strategies that you can take away, some things that you can do that will help you to be successful. Um, I will make a plug since many of you are at the end of your uh, program. I teach EDU 5400 spring, summer, and fall. It's a web-based course on building character in youth. So if you find this interesting and you're looking for uh, a three semester hour graduate course that doesn't require you to go to class all the time, enroll in that sometime. All right. <clears throat> the objectives that I have with this program are, first of all, in the upper left corner, you see fewer behavior problems. We all want fewer behavior problems, yes? Have you had any behavior problems in student teaching? Okay. So we all would like to reduce those. But we also want stronger youth character. Okay, those things go hand in hand, don't they? We know that students who seem to exhibit more character tend to exhibit fewer behavior problems. Well, I say there's a pyramid in how we can accomplish that. It starts by building self-respect, and it moves to self-discipline, and winds at the top with responsibility. It's very important that we try to attend to these three areas if we want to be successful with our students. Before we can talk about how to build character, we need to understand what it is. So I'd like to ask you, what do you think of when I say character? It can be a definition, it can be a behavior, whatever pops to mind. Just uh, toss something out. Respect. What do you think? Okay, respect, talk about that. Well, I think it's important for people of good character to respect one another and respect differences. Okay, good. So respecting each other and respecting differences, uh, and, and as I'll talk about, respecting themselves is an important part of that. Okay, good. What else? Yes? I always kind of think of how it's funny to use someone. Because usually you kind of look at someone and you can be like, well, you know, they have good character, and it just means like a whole bunch of qualities that they have or a whole bunch of qualities that they don't have. So we use character as kind of an umbrella term to refer to, to the quality of a person that we're talking about. Okay, good. What else? Yes? One's personality and habits. Okay, talk about that. Personality and habits. How so? Uh, personality and what traits do they have? Strengths, weaknesses, likes, dislikes, and habits. What kind of a person are they? How do they act with others, with their peers, with children, with their families? Good. So we could go on and we could name many other things, but I think we've heard enough already to know character is huge, isn't it? Character is massive. If you think about what it is you're trying to teach, it's what a person is. <laughs> okay, um, that's going to be a little tricky, isn't it? Because there are so many different things we have to account for as we're trying to uh, build these kinds of uh, character characteristics, traits you mentioned, in our students. So that makes it extremely difficult when we say, well, I want to teach character. Um, so sometimes I've found it useful when I have trouble getting my hands around something, I'll look at the opposite of it. And I'll say, OK, well, if I'm not sure exactly what character is or how to do that, let's look at the opposite, behavior-related challenges. 
And I think of it as the opposite because students who lack character tend to exhibit more behavior-related challenges, right? So give me some examples of those. And I'm sure you've all experienced some recently. Um, can you give me an example of perhaps a, an ongoing challenge, a student who never seems to respond, uh, or a really difficult one that you're not sure how to handle? Anybody want to volunteer? Yes. Can somebody tell you about them? Or? Yeah, just give me an example of one. Okay, well, no matter what I do, he just won't. He just refuses to do any of the work in the class. Uh, it has nothing to do with it, in my opinion, but he's the, he's the only BD student we have. I don't think it has anything to do with it. I just think he's lazy. He needs to, to, we have like a half a page of techniques and strategies that we've used to try to get him to respond and get him to work in class from being stern and being, you know, that sweet, kind, gentle, loving to be, you know, re rewarding. I mean, we even, you know, stoop to the level of giving token rewards just to get to work, and nothing works, no matter how hard we try to do it. <coughs> and unfortunately, this is the, it's coming to the point to where he has to make a decision on whether or not he wants to do the work. But we can only go so far as teachers to make them do their work, and if he's not going to do it, then sorry. Right. There's only so much we can do. So that's a big problem. You have a, a toolkit, you might say, of different strategies to try, and you go through every tool, and you still have the same behavior. So, yeah, that is, that's a good example. What else? Yes? I had one in my class, um, however, she's not in my class anymore. She had the pregnancy emotional issues going on. Mm. Okay. So that was behavior related because you never knew what her emotion level would be from right. one day to the next. Good. Okay, good example. Someone give me another one. Yes? We have a student who's going through uh, family challenges at home, divorce, people in their family going to court, <coughs> things like that. That can affect e even even having issues about whether or not they're going to have you know lunch today or or, or the right kind of clothes or whatever. Okay. Everything of okay. those things can relate. So a heart wrenching kind of a, a challenge to be facing. Yes. I have a student who has kind of developed a character on herself or an image um, of being like the bad girl or the bad person. Um, so she kind of refuses to do absolutely anything. Any kind of work and you know it's any kind of group work. Absolutely. I think it's a result of like portraying an image that she <coughs> Okay. Great examples. And you know, I, I have to say, if I could solve all of those like that, I wouldn't be standing here. I'd be touring all around the world, you know, making millions of dollars. But I'm going to help you to come up with some strategies for approaching these in a little bit different way than perhaps you have so far. Um, <coughs> when I look at the things that you mention, and if you think about the multitude of behavior-related challenges that you face, I think you'll agree that most often the challenges are symptoms of something else that's going on, aren't they? Students who refuse to participate, it's probably something has influenced them to do that, right? And it's usually not something in your classroom. It's usually not something that you have direct control over. That's the hard part because we're dealing with a problem that we have limited influence on. 